But you could tell he wanted, I mean, he, he was happy to be there. That goes a long way. A guy that wants to be there and wants to win. I can't believe he takes like a grappling match and then fights yeah. straight away. Yeah. Even he does gi matches and then comes and beats. Yeah. He's not done. If, if they don't give him a match and try, he's going to come into the tournament. Oh, really? Yeah. No, he, he compete, compete, compete. Win or lose, doesn't matter. He, he feels he gets better by live competition, which makes perfect sense. But I'm pretty sure the last time he, when he got knocked down in MMA, he actually took a grappling match the weekend after. Who could knock him out like that? Dan Hooker. Oh, Hooker. Oh, and Hooker's a stud. Week, yeah. like, <laughs> did you work out with Hooker? I did train at City Kickboxing, but I only, I did cage wrestling, wool wrestling with okay. Israel, but Hooker wasn't there that day. Okay. Oh, you did work out with Israel? Because then you were in the camp, you were in the camp with Whitaker. Am I making that up? You were Robert Whitaker. Yeah, yeah. so I trained with Whitaker for maybe nine days. Okay. But leading up to his, um, I believe he was meant to face Rocco, but he ended up having to pull out, oh no, Gastelum. And he had to pull out. He pulled it, yeah, the stomach. Okay. All right, guys, what's happening? I'm Chael, Craig jo king of grappling, Craig Jones. And I got to tell you, future star. Happy birthday, by the way. 19 when we make, uh, met 20 now, so you must have had a birthday just in the last 30 days. Uh, Roberto, both victorious tonight here in Submission Underground. Uh, both with incredible techniques, and they were different. I've, I've asked Roberto if he could, could just show us real fast on the triangle choke that he was able to establish. Generally, in a triangle choke, a guy could maybe get his arm in there to create some space or even posture up. His opponent, Don Stoner, was able to do neither. In fact, he had an arm in there. He took it out. He was so uncomfortable. He was able, able to gain his posture. And Roberto, I was hoping you could show us with the great Craig Jones how you got that position so quickly, but also how you stopped your opponent from creating some space. Yeah, so... I was controlling the wrist and I was hoping for him to try to sit up. If he takes both wrists out, then he, I can start pulling the head. But he let me keep the control on the wrist. And he wasn't really leaving, pushing the arm away from the chest. So when I saw that, I tried to go. Ooh. He defended the first one, he came back in. I went for the second side, he defended again. And I just, third time's the charm. When I closed this one, he tried to bring the elbow in, but I had just enough space with the head uh, the chin was actually inside. Yep, and I had just enough space with the side of the neck, so I started going for the arm. When he started defending the arm is when I was able to squeeze the head. The arm was tight, but I felt like the neck was just tight enough to work. I could get the now, triangle. Now, what are you doing that's stopping him from bringing his hips in and creating space? I mean, I know that's defense 101. So I'm, I'm constantly using my ankles to push his tailbone in. If I just keep my guard kind of loose, there's nothing really there. So I need to keep pushing him with my legs as well with my hands. So I'm constantly pushing him back and forth. If he goes forward, I can close it in. So I have to use my legs kind of like hands as well. Okay, and then once, I, once the triangle is locked, is it pressure on the head? Is it stopping him yeah, from pulling it, up? You need to, because if the head's down, I still have the triangle as long as I focus on the neck. I had, he had an opportunity to escape but when I hugged the arm. I was able to tighten up more my leg. I actually opened up my triangle for a second so I can close it again. And then I just started going back and forth between the thigh and the arm. And when I felt like he was avoiding the, the triangle and more defending on the arm, that's when I switched only to the leg. Very nice. All right, Craig, to go over to you. So you, you end up- You know who used to do that triangle at the time? Nogueira, double wrist control. Big Nog? Yeah, yeah. the classic one. Uh, when you bring up good memories on Big Knock, by the way, good good memories on those uh, Noguera brothers and their finishes and pride. Uh, okay, so you end up going through regulation. You get put in the overtime. The overtime for you is very interesting as a fan because that means one, one of your weapons just went away. We're not going to see a leg manipulation or a heel hook. It's just not part of the game in overtime. You were able to get out of there in your very first attempt with a rear naked choke. How were you able to secure that? So, actually, in our original match years ago, I tried to set up the same. So the strangle from here, right? So I was having trouble getting in between the shoulder and the chin here. Uh -huh. I was having trouble getting space. So what I started to do was set up the uh, re-necked strangle with the arm in. And if Roberto doesn't move his arm, we're going to generate pressure to tap. But if he starts to relieve pressure by lifting his elbow, he starts to make space in front of the shoulder. We can go back to a regular strangle. So if we're controlling on the uh, strangle side arm here, I start to try and apply pressure Rear neck and strangle with the arm in, and you see he's gonna defend that by opening his shoulder to give himself room to breathe between mm -hmm. his shoulder and neck, and that starts to allow me to slip the hand. So back this in. is a game of you feeling pressure and then releasing. He goes out, you slip in. Got and it. also, even if I'm not strangling from this, he can't move his shoulders. He can't create an angle here. 
So it's even a static sort of hold to allow me to develop a bit of ride time in this position. All right, very nice. Guys, there is some technique, and I will tell you, we don't do a lot of technique here. When you have two of the best guys in the world, when you have the king and possibly the future generation, I thought it was important that people see some of the intricacies. I want to thank Roberto, thank Craig Jones, thank all of you for watching. Until next time, this is Beyond the Fight.